Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Oasis Church. We're glad that you're here. Hey, let's go stand up together. And this morning, we're going to give God all the honor, all the glory. So I encourage you to set your attention to him, set your mind to him uh, as we focus on giving God um, all of our praise, all the glory today. Here we go. running hide you bring the broken back to life only you can only you can you set me free from every chain you fill my heart with songs of praise only you can only you can jesus you're the only reason that i'm even breathing i am wide awake To bring this run away back home Only you can, only you can You give me love, you give me life You keep me dancing through the night Only you can, only you can My heart beats only for your glory My hands reach a freedom and hope My soul stings Father, you are holy My feet Chance to read up, to read up. Every beat is calling, every beat is calling out your name. Every beat is calling, every beat is calling out your name. Singing out, Jesus, you're the reason. Jesus, you're the only reason that I'm even breathing. I am wide awake. You move me, your freedom is consuming. I feel it rushing through me. I'll never be the same. Yes, God, we call out to you today, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, and we trust in you, God.
Amen. He is a holy, wonderful, and awesome God. Why don't you go ahead and have a seat just for a moment today? How do we say thank you to those who gave everything? How do we honor the men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom? We say thank you by remembering. Today, we honor our heroes. Lives given, not in vain, but with purpose. We stand grateful for their courage, their strength, and their resolve. For the fabric of America is stitched together by the thread of the brave. Today, we remember and we will never forget. Well, today we remember. You know, we got Memorial, this is Memorial Day weekend, Memorial Day's tomorrow. And, uh, you know, I know a lot of us are excited. We get three-day weekends. We get all these sales going on. But, you know, the, the reality of this, of this holiday, you know, it, it, it hits hard. Because we, we sit here today in these nice chairs and we can, we can worship together in this building because of those that have gone before us. Because of those that have given their lives for our freedom here in this country. And today we honor that. We honor that God has instilled people with courage, with bravery, to go out and to fight for what's right. And you know, a lot of the times when you, uh, when you talk to people that have served in the military, you know, they don't, they don't necessarily fight for everybody. They may not even fight for uh, their neighbors but they fight for their families. They fight for their brothers that they're standing beside or their sisters. And in doing so, they, they fight for us all. And so today I'm just so honored um, that here in this country, we have this day to honor those that have fallen. And thank you all for, if, if anybody out here is serving, thank you so much. But I know even that even all of you that are serving here today, you know, today um, is not your day. And many people have told me this and they know because it's the day to honor those that are not here, that are not standing with us today. And maybe you have those people in your family. Maybe you have people that have fallen that are close to you. Today's a day to honor and remember the sacrifice that they gave. And just like we do with those that have gone before us, that's why we take communion here every week here at Oasis. Because to honor is to remember. And so we remember Jesus' sacrifice on the, on the cross for us. You see, those that have gone before us in this country, they died for our freedom so that we can worship here today. But Jesus died for our eternal freedom from sin so that we can be with God in eternity forever. And I'm just so humbled today uh, just to know that those have gone before us that have fought and died and for a God that has gone before us and died in our place and taken our sin and our shame upon himself. And so today we have so many reasons to be thankful for and I hope that you're thankful today. And uh, we're gonna take communion. If you didn't get a chance to grab those communion elements, we have these tables up front as well as in the back. Feel free at any time you can get up take of those elements, bring them back to your seat. If you're watching online, this would be a great time to find those if you have a piece of bread, a cup of juice. But today we take this, this simple piece of bread and cup of juice just to honor and remember Jesus. When we take this bread, it represents his body broken for us. And when we take that cup, representing his blood poured out for the forgiveness of our sins. So today while we pray, not only do we wanna honor 
our God and our Lord and our Savior for giving us the salvation that we have. But we want to honor those who have gone before us in this country that have laid down their lives. The Bible says this, there is no greater love than to lay down your life for a friend. And so I'm just so thankful for those that have gone before us today. Let's pray. God, thank you for everything that you are to us. God, thank you for the bravery and the courage that you've given to those that have gone before in this country that have fought and never returned. And God, I thank you for those family members and families that have had to, had to go on with their lives after a loved one never came back. And if there are any of those here today, God, I just pray that for their peace, for their comfort. God, that we can rally around them. And so, God, today we honor those that have gone before us. We honor you, our Lord, our Savior, for going to the cross for us, for giving us freedom from our sin today. And God, we thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for those that have sacrificed before us. And God, just what an amazing God you are. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, while we continue to sing today, you can take those elements whenever you're ready. stand up together today.
trust you. We trust you with our lives. God, today we honor you and thank you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. Amen. You can have a seat. Work. That's plain work. 
When work at home is planned and organized for cooperation, there can usually be more time for leisure. I'm certainly in favor of those things. Leisure, fun. Who is it? Wouldn't we all be happier if we worked out a little system for living together in harmony? And how can we manage them? We'll have to work out the full answer together. Say, Mom, it's well. problems can be solved through frank and friendly discussion, which points the way to a happy family life. You know, this is beginning to be quite a family project. It certainly is. Good morning, church. Good morning. Great to see all of you in the house. Welcome to all of you watching online. You know what? We want for you to be connected to Jesus Church. And the best way to do that is to see what's coming up, see what's going on. If you've never downloaded our church app, download that. But also, it'd be helpful to receive our weekly email as well because we have community events in there as well. So what's coming up? We have uh, Colorado Praise coming up this Thursday and Friday. You can register uh, for a 30-minute segment to pray. Download a prayer guide. I'm telling you, it will transform your prayer life. I encourage you to do that. We've partnered with churches all over our state to pray for our state. So do that. Uh, breakfast, men's breakfast coming up here at 8 a.m. Graduates next week. We're going to honor our high school graduates, pray over them, give them a gift. Father's Day, uh, we're going to do uh, after services. We're going to have a big barbecue uh, farewell to Phil and his family. We're hoping to keep them a few weeks longer uh, for that, but that's on Father's Day. Host a group. We have groups coming up. Like this is a time of the year where we're between things, like our groups have ended most for the most part, and then we got some starting back up. You can host a group. What would that entail? Well, invite your friends. Invite somebody you like to come into your house. Uh, it's a, it can be as simple as downloading our uh, on our church app. The, you, you come to church on Sunday, you hear the message, and you have an outline, and there are discussion questions at the bottom of that. You can just go through those with your friends, with your family. Just pick a time, spend an hour together, pray for one another, learn some, discuss the topic, read the scriptures over again, host a group. If you'd be willing to do that and open your home to others from our church, uh, let us know that and host a group. Family fun. Uh, we have uh, we are in our community here over on Civic Center Drive, I think is what they call it. But uh, every maybe final Saturday uh, in the month, like June, July, and August, they are doing a community event. We are going to do kids games, and we need volunteers for that if that interests you. And, and then our Fourth of July event, we need over 100 volunteers here. If you're in town and you're coming, register for an hour. We're going to have registration uh, coming up next week for that where you can stand there and give prizes to some kid who just won a game. Oh, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. So uh, make sure you're reading through that email and uh, checking out what's going on so you can be connected. Uh, as, we, as we think, as we shift and think about worship through giving, I want to put a verse up. We're going to use it a little bit later. Uh, in the message today, but the verse is from James 4, and uh, this is why you, you don't even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You're a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. What's your life? It's a, a mist. It's just you're here today and gone tomorrow. I want to put this picture up. Uh, you might have seen this. I read this story last week, and it really hit me hard. Uh, because it looks like a, a cool picture. This guy is stopped on a busy street in, in California. He's, he's saving these ducks. Uh, people around him, the cars that were stopped, they were like, way to go, way to go. When he got the ducks to safety, somebody snapped this picture just seconds before he stepped in front of a car that wasn't paying attention, and his life ended just like that. Here today, gone tomorrow. And it's like, what has this got to do with giving? Well, it's a lot of times in life we're thinking, hey, I've got another day. Oh, I can do this next week. So really the subtitle for today's message could actually be, um, you know, you, you don't know what your life will hold or the urgency is now or let's not wait 
that might work. Let's not wait. So even when it comes to giving, I know a lot, some of us, we've never given consistently or we've not done this consistency consistently in our life. So uh, what do we want to do? We want to give consistently, but with our life, we want to attend to those things that matter the most because we, we're, we're amiss. We, we don't know what tomorrow a hold. So what I want to do right now, some of your favorite time, I want you to stand up and introduce yourself to somebody and say, I'm a mist. Stand up. Karen. I'm watching. I'm watching. I'm a mist. I'm a mist. Oh, it's I'm a, I'm a mist and a mist and a smith. <laughs> you can be seated. You can be seated. I hope you greeted each other at home as well. Just look at the person next to you drinking that coffee, or you're out at Lake right now watching us. Hey, we're glad that you <laughs> you've stopped to join and worship with us. If you're joining us for the very first time, uh, we're right in the middle of this series, Faith and Family, and, and it really is. Uh, we're focusing on parenting in in this message series, but the some principles apply to all of us. Uh, I'm confident of that. But we need a, a message series on parenting, I think, uh, for three really good reasons. One is that parents need to hear a message about parenting from Scripture, and the kids need to hear this stuff, right? And the church, we just need to be reminded that God has established the family as like a cornerstone, a bedrock, a foundational unit to to be the foundation of all of society everywhere for all time. But faith and family are under attack today. If you've not noticed that, I mean, the consequences are everywhere. I mean, young kids, 10, 12-year-olds are committing heinous acts of violence. Uh, depression is, is skyrocketing. And the, the family, faith and family are just being undermined like never before in America today. And it's going to take more than the government and the educational system to solve it. It's going to take more than TikTok and the TV to solve it. What's it going to take to solve the dilemma? It's going to take faith-filled families, faith-filled parenting, faith-filled churches. So today, uh, we're going to look at the needed nurturing the needed nurturing of parenthood. And we're going to look at three principles that are unchanging. And these just don't apply to parenting. They apply to every relationship. Uh, but particularly when it comes to parenting, these are unchanging principles because the philosophy of parenting changes over the years. If, if you've ever been a parent, you know this. Take, for example, my firstborn, when she was born, and she'd be sucking on her pacifier, and Gabrielle would drop the pacifier. We would boil the water and put the pacifier in, blow it off and stick it in her mouth. And Gage came along a few years later, and he'd drop his pacifier. We'd turn on the faucet and hot water a little bit, and we'd stick it back in there. Camden, he came along, and his pacifier would drop, and we'd pick it up and blow it off. Maybe we'd lick it ourselves and stick it back in there. I am so confident if we had a fourth child and the pacifier dropped, we'd let the dog lick it and stick it back in there because the philosophy of parenting changes over time. But there are these principles we're going to look at today uh, from a, an encounter Jesus had with little children. And here we're going to learn three unchanging principles that apply to parenting and really any relationship if you want that to be healthy. So we're going to look at Mark chapter 10 and verse starting with verse 13. When it says this, people were bringing little children to Jesus to have him touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. And he goes on, I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. Now that's a whole sermon in itself. But he goes on, and he took the children in his arms, put his hands on them and blessed them. And that one little story, we see uh, G with Jesus' interaction with these kids, 
three unchanging principles. And number one, if you're filling in the outline, uh, the first unchanging principle uh, to, to needed nurturing is the loving touch, the loving touch. The, the loving, appropriate touch communicates unconditional love. It communicates acceptance. In verse 13, it says that people were bringing little children to Jesus to have him what? Touch them. So why were they bringing the children to Jesus to have him touch them? Because there's power in a loving touch. Um, and we probably have all, we've got a vision of what Jesus looks like. I mean, I didn't grow up in the church, but my grandma had a picture of Jesus, this one, and that was my vision of what Jesus looked like. I have a new vision of what Jesus looks like, and it's from the chosen. Any chosen fans out there? Yes, Highly recommend that you watch the three seasons of Chosen. But, but my image now of Jesus is, is from the Chosen. I just love his down-to-earth style, his humor, his sarcasm. And uh, in a lot of the shows, uh, Jesus is just moving moments when Jesus is touching and he's healing and he's encouraging people. And that's the image of Jesus that I have when he's touching. I, I think some people have a different view of what Jesus is like, especially when he's touching, because there's a lot of people that watch the TV preachers, the, the, the guys that have the big bad hair. You know, you, you ever seen any of those? And I think their vision of Jesus touching people is like their vision of when the people stand in line and the preacher slaps them on the head like that, says, be healed in the name of Jesus. And I think that's people's vision where they think that all these kids are lining up and Jesus is smacking each one. He says, be healed in the name of the Father, in the name of me, and in the name of the Holy Ghost, you know, something like that. Maybe, but my, my vision of Jesus receiving the kids and touching them has to do with this traditional picture that I've seen for years of Jesus sitting on a rock and he's holding, he's embracing the kids and, and he's just uh, uh, comforting them and he's blessing them. And in reality, the, the touch of Jesus was unique. It was unique and special for sure. Um, and, and how do we know this? We can actually get a clue from the Greek word for touch. So it not only means to touch but it means to embrace. It means to attach oneself to. And, and then so when the children came running to Jesus, I can just picture him touching them and picking them up, setting them on his lap. He's blessing them just like a parent would receive a child. Now, um, why is touch so important? Why is touch so important? You know, I heard a, um, a story uh, many years ago, uh, a true story, uh, back in the 13th century, King Frederick II, he, he was this king that was interested in a lot of things, and he did a lot of experiments on humans that was really just uh, horrible. And uh, one of the experiments he did was with a group of infants. And what he wanted to determine was if an infant, if, if an infant didn't grow up hearing people speak, or anything, what would they grow up to be able to speak the language that Adam and Eve spoke in the Garden of Eden? Eden. So he took all these infants, and the only thing uh, that they were going to receive was nourishment and, and changing of diapers, just the physical nature. They were not to be pampered, you know, no goo goo ga ga. They were never to hear human language. So what was the language that these babies grew up with? Well, they didn't grow up at all. They all died within a year. Yeah, because uh, why? Well, a 13th century historian actually wrote this. They could not live without petting. The, the babies actually died for want of physical touch. Now, I'm curious. How many of you would say, you know what? I'm just a touchy person. I love to hug. I'm just a physically affectionate type. Yeah, see, look around, yeah. How many of you would say, well, not me. I'm just, I'm a, maybe a little bit, but I'm not into the touchy, touchy stuff. Who would raise your hand on that? Uh, yeah, the rest of you who didn't raise your hands, like I'm not affectionate and I'm not gonna play your silly game, preacher. I know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm kind of, 
I'm touchy touchy, but when it comes to like women, I, I kind of do the half hug thing. I'll go in like this and, and pat a little bit, you know, maybe a little squeeze, but there's a, a few of you and you know who you are. It's like, no, give me a real hug and you give me a real hug. Uh, with guys, those of you who are huggers, you know, we have a, a system. If you ladies didn't know that, we will shake hands if you're a hugger. And then we kind of lean in with the right shoulder and we pat three times and we break the hug and walk off. And, and that's a very, very holy moment for us. Um, there are other guys, they're, they're not huggers. And so what do we do? Well, we shake hands and look at each other in the eye and that's a, that's a sign of respect. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I went in and shook a guy's hand, looked him in the eye and I mistook him for a hugger. I, I went in and he's like stiff armed me. So, I, yeah, my bad, bro. Uh, so that's just kind of a rhythm that we have. But uh, the rules of touch totally change when it comes to sports. You can touch each other when you're playing sports that would be totally inappropriate anywhere else. You know, it's like you, you, can, you can go up to a guy, you know, and just pat him on, on, the, on the rear. But you would never... You would never do that like at the workplace. A guy does a great presentation. He walks off the podium. Hey, way to go, man. You know, you just wouldn't do that. Rules change. And uh, another thing is that, that you've got to pat a guy's butt with your hand flat, never cupped. When it's cupped, you answer to Jesus. It's got to be flat. Now, now we got that settled. Now, um, how does that apply to parenting? Well, I've always been a huggy person. Uh, but my wife, not so much. Uh, and I see some of your opposites. I can tell that today. But having kids changes all that. It's like the Holy Spirit just fills us up because we just want to hold the babies. We want to kiss and hug on those babies and be affectionate. Even when, if you say, hey, I'm not affectionate, you are with your little ones. But we've got to learn to be affectionate, to have the loving touch because it is essential for a healthy relationship. So look at uh, the power of touch from Mark chapter 6 and verse 56. It says, whenever he went, whenever Jesus went into the villages, towns, or countryside, they placed the sick in the marketplaces. They begged him to let them touch even the edge of his cloak, and all who touched him were healed. Now that word for touched appears 20 times in the New International Version, and every single time it refers to Jesus. And he, there's some healing that takes place. There's, there's, there's some blessing that takes place because there is power in appropriate touch. There's power in that. In fact, a study from the University of North Carolina investigated how hugging before a stressful event reduced the negative effects of stress on the body. And then they looked at parents and children. And, and girls during their teenage years their, their need for loving, a loving touch increases as they grow older, but at the same time, parents typically withdraw as a child gets older because it's easy to cuddle with a little one and not so much as they're growing older. And dads, the information suggests that you hugging your daughter is a means of her understanding what purity is about because when they get a loving touch and a hug from a godly person, well, they can say no to an unly, ungodly person who is touching them inappropriately. And I also discovered that the younger girls are often touched five times more than little boys, but the boys need for touch and, and hugging it's the same. It's equal for girls and boys. So like when a child, you know, boys like two, he's a huggy, huggy or four, but they get up to be eight or so. And they're like, that's not cool. You know, what's cool then you got to be creative parents. So you can do a, the secret handshake or the fist bump or whatever that is. You, you wrestle with them. You pat them on the bottom, never cupped, always flat, whatever that is. Um, and you get creative with your, your, your touch and, and your affection. Uh, I had my home office in the basement, and I, my boys would come down. They're wrestling in the other room, and it's just like so distracting and aggravating, you know, you know, and so the Holy Spirit, I think, gave me this. So I started, I, I turned that around. So when they come down, and uh, if they ever do that, I, I just call them over and uh, give them a hug. They come over to my chair, 
and uh, do that. And I'll say, hey, let me see your muscles. And they'll do this, and I'll touch their muscles. And they say, let me see your muscle, Dad, and I'll flex like that. And they'll go, oh, Dad, that's so huge. And inevitably, they'll poke me in the belly and go, that's so huge too, Daddy. And I'll smack them and say, you get that touch. No, I don't, I don't do that. Uh, but that touch, is, you got to, you, you, you know, I'm, and I'm still working <laughs> on the belly. Uh, but it's so important to be creative and being affectionate to both your, your kids, your boys, and your girls. And, and guys, uh, affectionate, touching affectionately is, is very, very important in your marriage. Don't, don't refuse it. And I'm not talking about going up to your wife and like, you know, just grabbing her or whatever. I, I've heard that from a very good source. That's not romantic. I don't know why it's not romantic. It's romantic to me, uh, but it might not be to your wife. So understand that non-sexual touch is very, very important, guys, uh, in your marriage. And you may think, oh, there's no way I could do that. You can. The Bible says you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength, and you can, you can do that. But touch is an unchanging principle that make relationships very, very healthy, especially between parent and child. Unchanging principle number two is abundant time. Time, time, and more time, quality time, focused time, abundant time. You know, the kids were asked, how do you spell love and how do kids spell love? T-I-M-E, time, abundant time. Uh, we read uh, in that in our passage, people were bringing little children to Jesus to have him touch them, but disciples rebuked them. You know, in other words, they can't, they were going to the kids going, oh, he's too busy. He's too important. He's got to raise somebody from the dead. He's got to heal somebody with their blind eyes, you know, just get away, get away. But Jesus was not happy. It says when Jesus saw this, he was what? indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. That word translated indignant appears 11 times in the New Testament and twice it applies to Jesus being indignant and he was indignant here and, and it literally means highly grieved. So he was, he was angry. He wasn't happy. He's like, no, 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 no. Let, let the kids Come to me. Let, let, let them come to me. Um, how many of you guys are like, hey, I'm a NASCAR fan? Raise your hands. Raise your, NASCAR fan. God can heal you of that. I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. No, they, I'm, I'm joking. They, uh, they say it's a sport. You know, they say it's a sport. But, but I don't know about that. I mean, I, I've been practicing learning NASCAR. <clears throat> Go left. <clears throat> Go left, go. It doesn't doesn't seem all that hard, does it? I know. Go left, go left. Um, now I thought it was really easy until I did the Richard Petty driving experience, and uh, there I am, eight laps, Kentucky Motor Speedway, eight laps at 140 mile an hour average. It was awesome, and and it and it's it's scary too. Uh, but what I really love is. Watching, if you watch it, is watch the pit crews. You know, the cars, they zoom in, and these five guys jump over the wall, and they go after the car. We got a picture of it here, and they, they jump out after it. And these guys, in 10 to 15 seconds, this is the average NASCAR change. They change tires. They fill the thing up with gas. Uh, they clean the windshield. Uh, the guy eats a Happy Meal, and then they zoom off, you know. I mean, 12 seconds and the average there, uh, and the car zooms off. And I would argue that today, that a lot of parents are um, what I would call doing pit stop parenting. Pit stop parenting. Now, I'm exaggerating just a little bit, but we're going to get to the time element in a minute. But what am I talking about? It's a, hey, how was your day? Oh, great, great. Yeah, do your homework? Yeah, good, 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 good. Do you wear clean underwear? Yeah, yeah, good, 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 good. Uh, hey, did you wash your hands and make sure not to have sex before marriage? Uh, good night. Sleep tight. It's pit stop parenting. You know, let's get in the van. Get in the van. Let's go. What are we going to have for, for dinner, Mom? We'll just find a French fry underneath the seat in the van. Eat that and let's go. Let's go. Pit stop parenting. So 12 seconds, 10 to 15 seconds in the pit stop. I read this statistic. 
and it, I think it was from 2019, that the average dad spends 37 seconds a day with their child, each child in focus time, 37 seconds. Those of you that are married with kids, both of you working, um, it's, it's even a little more difficult than that. Single parents, I have no idea how you do it all. You get the uh, kids off to school, you, you get their clothes on right somehow, <laughs> and you spend time with them. I mean, how difficult would that be? But wherever you are, you're always going to struggle with the time element, you know, and you're going to come up with an excuse. I just don't really have time to spend with the kids. And, and I've got my excuse. I'm like, I've got four kids and 500 of you guys. It's like, that's my excuse. You know, what do you do? And we will all come up with, it's like, I can hear parents saying, well, when I get through with whatever this situation is, then I'm going to spend more time with the kids. Like when I, when I finish my degree, now I'm going to be able to get a job and spend more time with the kids. You know, when I, when I, I pay down this credit card debt. Well, well, then I'm going to be able to spend more time with the kids. You know, when I get the spend, I got to spend more time at work right now because I'm looking for that prom promotion. When I get the promotion, then I'm going to spend more time with the kids. And I'll say this, if you don't decide to do it now, you likely won't do it at all. So you choose what you have time for. Let me say that again. You will choose what you take time for. Billy Graham was once asked when he was older, hey, would you do anything different in life? If there's one thing, if there's one thing that you would do differently in life, what would it be? And he didn't say this. He didn't say, well, I would have held more crusades or he didn't say, I, I wish I would have developed more institutes where pastors could be trained. He didn't say, well, I, I'd, I'd like to have written more books. He said, no, the one thing I would do differently, I would have spent more time with my kids. I would spend more time with my kids. Um, my wife, uh, she's incredible at making the kids a priority. And she does so much. I mean, she home educates her kids. We call it the, the Smitty Independent school district and she's busy with that but beyond that she's like paying the bills she's figuring out the the menu all week long she's the chief chef she does the laundry the just the other day she was like planning out the entire summer until uh, fall starts and school starts again I mean it's just amazing she like takes care of the home and and I do ministry and, and it kind of works that way um, the the two big time thieves that I have in my life, it's the cell phone and email. Because I have this rule where if I get, if somebody communicates with me uh, tw within 24 hours, I want to communicate back with them. Now, sometimes I mess that up, but I have another rule as well. And that's when I'm at home, I try to limit what I do on the computer, on my phone with email and, and with making phone calls. But a lot of times that's when I have to respond to people because that's when they're home from work. So I try to limit that when I am with the family. Um, and it's been a struggle for me to be so available to uh, everybody else and not my kids. So my wife is great at making the kids a priority I've got work to do. I'm just telling you that. But you make a choice. You make a choice of what it is that you're going, what you're going to do, what you have time for. So we started off with this verse, and I want to read the verse before it from James chapter 4. It says this, Now listen, you who say today or tomorrow will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money, spend focused time with our children. Hmm. Why? You don't even know what will happen tomorrow. And this is what we read earlier. What is your life? Your life is a what? A mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. So how do we give the needed nurturing if you're a parent or if you have a close relationship? Well, there's affection, the physical touch, there is time, having time, abundant time 
with people that we love. Principle number three, we nurture with encouraging talk, with encouraging speech. Uh, Jesus said this to the kids. It said that he took the children in his arms, put his hands on them, and it says that he blessed them. We don't know what he said, but he said something to encourage them. He didn't say, hey, would you stop kicking your sister? Would, would, you, would you stand up here, quit, quit cutting in line trying to see me? No, he, he, he blessed them. He gave them words of life, not words of death. He, he gave them encouraging words, not discouraging words. And one of the most important things that we can do for our children is to speak words that are encouraging. So you got to watch the words that, that, that you speak. And if you're like me, you struggle with this. I'm so good at catching them doing something wrong. Don't do that, you know, because that's, that's how I grew up. So it's very, uh, I have to be really, really focused to catch them into doing something good. Say, oh, that was awesome. You did a great job with that. You hit it out of the park today with that. So you got to watch what it is that you say, watch, watch the words that you say, especially if it's very difficult for you to do that. Did you know that in all of the New Testament, there are just three times that God spoke audibly, three times. One was when Jesus was baptized. The other was when he was transfigured. The other was during the final week of Jesus. And I want you to see the encouraging words that that God spoke at Jesus' baptism after Jesus came up out of the water. In Matthew 3, 17, we read, and a voice from heaven, God's voice, he said this, this is my son whom I love. You know, you get echoes. With him, I am well pleased. I mean, think about this. The heavens open up and God speaks. Son, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. I love you so much. You're doing an incredible job. Keep it up. I'm so proud of you. I think this was recorded. So we, especially as dads, could hold, would have something. That we've got a script we got a script that we can use when we catch our kids doing good. And parents, don't underestimate the encouraging words that you speak your kids will remember. I can remember when I was a little boy, growing up, when I did something good, my daddy would say, uh, good job, tiger. Called me tiger when I, when I did something good. Way to go, tiger. Way to go. My um, mom and my stepdad my stepdad and I were really close, and uh, they would, if they sent me a card, which they, all, they were great at sending cards, or even on the phone, they'd call me, they'd sign the cards, the good son, and then even hanging up, you're, you're the good son. My, my stepdad watched a movie once, and uh, there's a little irony in that. Um, he had three sons of his own, and, uh, but we had such a close relationship, he called me the good son, encouraging words. Parents, you get one chance, one chance. Touch, time, and talk. Touch, time, and talk. And for, for those of you that say, oh, well, yeah, I'll, I'll get, I want to get to it eventually. Let me just get through this. No, I'm a mist. I'm a mist here today and gone tomorrow. So you want to get that straightened out like today. And if you think I'm kidding, I mean, just think about when, when the babies were, were little, you know, you're holding your infant in your arm and you blink and then they're standing. Then you blink and you open your eyes and then they're walking. And then you blink and you open your eyes and you're sending them off on a bicycle without training wheels. And then as you blink and you open your eyes, you're sending them off in a car. And that's when you learn to pray like you've never prayed before. And then, and then you, you blink again and you're sending them off to college or sending them off to get married or you blink and then you open your eyes and you're sending them off and, and they're going to live on their own. You blink, life's a mist. We spin and we touch the time, the talk, because we don't know what tomorrow holds. Would you pray with me? Father, I pray that you and your Holy Spirit would minister to each of us today in the way that only you can do. I thank you for relationships, whether 
we're parenting at the moment, or maybe it's just a significant relationship in our life with a mom or dad, brother or sister, or somebody that we're close with? Are we loving them with appropriate touch? Are we spending adequate time, investing purposeful time? Are we building them up rather than tearing them down? And I pray especially today, if there's relationships that are estranged, that there'd be restoration. We only get this one life to make things right. And I pray for doors to open because we're opening the doors. Let us not live with regret. God, change our relationships as you change our hearts. I just thank you for making it possible to have a relationship with you, for sending your one and only son that you tell us, even when we've blown it, that if we place our faith in Jesus, that we, when we're baptized into Christ, you raise us up a new creation. But after that, we falter and we fail. But all you say is that we're turn, to turn back to you. And Lord, I pray that we could have that today, that when we are closer to you, we can be closer to others. Help us to understand the urgency of time that we get this one chance to get it right. Lord, help us. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, let's go ahead and stand one last time together as we close out today. You know, God is a way maker. You know, maybe you've heard this message and realized you might have messed up in the past or things that you wanted to do differently. But God is the way maker. He is the miracle worker. If we trust in God, um, he is faithful and he will never let us down. So let's worship him to together today. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you, you are here, working in this place, I worship you, I worship you, come on, sing it again, you are here, you are here, moving in our midst, I worship you, I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you, I worship you. And you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. darkness my god that is who you are
God, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your kindness. Well, let's sing this out together. Even when I don't see it. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop. Come on, sing of his faithfulness today. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Yeah, waymaker. Promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are a way making miracle work. Promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. That is who you are. That's the God that we serve. Uh, he is an awesome and wonderful God. Well, hey, we have our prayer team up here. They are ready and waiting to pray with you if you need it. And remember, prayer is not a sign of weakness. It is a sign of strength that we get to communicate with our, with our God. And, and so use that uh, if you need to. Otherwise, have a great rest of your weekend, and we'll see you back here next Sunday.